Whenever you find yourself done with the project in Final Cut Pro, head on over to your library and select it. If we take a look in the top right, we can see just how much storage space this is taking up. This particular project is taking up 43 and a half gigabytes, which is just far too much. So let's head on up into our library with it selected, go to file, then go down to delete generated library files. From there, I recommend you delete your render files. And if you don't plan on editing again anytime soon, I would select all. I would also delete optimized media, proxy media, and unused magnetic mask files if you don't plan on working in this project again anytime soon. Don't worry, you can regenerate all of this at any time. So if you reopen the project years down the road, you can regenerate it and get back to working with no problem. After we've pushed OK, we can see that we have cleared out over 40 gigabytes of space from that one action. So like I said, I strongly recommend that you do this at the end of every project and jump back through your old projects and see what you can clear out. So you woke up feeling a little zany today and you decided to drop some horizontal footage down on your vertical timeline. And when you did, it looked something like this. We have crazy black bars on the top and bottom. Everything's been squeezed down to the middle. So you decide, I'm going to go over here to the transform tool. And I'm just going to increase that value all the way up until it fills the space. This is the part of the video where I tell you to please, please stop doing it this way. It's terrible. Instead of scaling it with the transform panel, scroll on down to the bottom of the video inspector and check out spatial conform. You'll see the type is set to fit. Go ahead and set that over to fill. This has numerous advantages. Number one, your scale is still at 100%. So it's way easier to work with these smaller numbers. Highly recommend. Number two, you can do this on all of your clips at the exact same time. Plus, you can do it in the browser, which means that every time you bring this footage down to the timeline, it's already going to be spatially conformed. So just select your clips. Let's go ahead and set it over to fill. And now anytime I drop any of these horizontal clips onto a vertical timeline like a madman, they will automatically be zoomed in correctly. Tip number three on this list is that compound clips solve a multitude of problems. If I were to take this image and drop it down onto my timeline, let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit. And let's say I wanted to add the Gaussian blur effect. I'll go ahead and add that in. And let's just drag this up like crazy. You should immediately notice that we have these sharp edges. That is because this image is a one by one ratio. So if I go ahead and click my transform tool, we can see that bounding box. This image is only going to be rendered within that space. Instead of applying the effect to your clip, first add it to your timeline, just like so. Go ahead and scale it to your liking, then right click on it and select new compound clip. And we can just call it whatever and I'll push OK. So now let's go ahead and re-add in that Gaussian blur. And if we crank this up like crazy, you'll see that we no longer have that issue where the edges are cutting it off sharply. And this applies not just for the Gaussian blur, this applies to basically every effect inside of Final Cut Pro, except for the drop shadow, which Apple has added in some fancy technology to make it so it works totally fine. It doesn't matter. But anyway, use the compound clip if you are struggling with an effect it's going to solve a lot of problems. Essentially, the compound clip is just reconforming it to the same aspect ratio as your project. The fourth tip on this list is that a lot of people forget that Final Cut Pro is constantly backing up their projects. This has helped me recently. I had an instance where I had a whole bunch of changes I created on a project, and then I realized I didn't really like those changes, but Final Cut Pro crashed. And so I was left with all of those changes having been made and I was unable to undo them. So rather than freaking out and redoing all of that progress in reverse, I instead went up to file, then went to open library and you'll see from backup. In here, you can choose when to restore from, which is super handy. And it even shows you what version of Final Cut Pro you were using on the right hand side. Once you're ready, you can go ahead and push open. And that's going to create another version of that library that was the backed up version. And if you expand this out, you can actually see the date and time of the backup. These backups aren't a perfect one-to-one, -one, but they can absolutely save your bacon. 
if you have done a lot of changes like I did previously. And the last tip on this list is going to greatly increase your workflow if you happen to work with sound effects. If we head over here to the left side, you should see this little music and camera icon. And in here, you'll notice that there's a sound effects folder. So the sound effects folder, you can scroll through quickly and see all of the various sound effects that come with Final Cut Pro. But unfortunately, this doesn't have all of the sound effects that I have downloaded over the years. It just has the sound effects built into Final Cut Pro. So to get our own sound effects into this folder, we'll head on over to Finder. You'll find your sound effects folder. So I've got mine right here. I'm going to right click on that and you're going to select Make Alias. This is a shortcut folder, so it's essentially pointing you to the correct folder, but it's not an actual duplicate of that folder. So I'm going to push Command C on that alias folder. Then I'm going to head to my Macintosh HD, Library, Audio, Apple Loops, Apple, Final Cut Pro sound effects. Then I'm going to push Command V to paste it, or you can push Option Command V, and that will paste it and delete the old variation we had earlier. And so now directly inside of Final Cut Pro, I have complete access to all of the hundreds of thousands of sounds that I've downloaded over the years. We can go up here to the top and we can search for them. Now, as convenient as it is to load these sounds directly into Final Cut Pro, there are a couple things you should be aware of. Number one, the organization is not very good. You can't favor any sounds and you have to search for sound effects exactly as they are spelt out. So if you have a typo, nothing is going to show up. Number two, the loading times for these sounds can be quite ridiculous. It takes Final Cut Pro a very long time to re-index these sounds every single time you open up Final Cut, so that can be quite annoying. And so I do want to point out one last incredible tip, and that is to check out Soundly, who was very generous to sponsor this video. So let me show you five reasons why you need to check out Soundly. Soundly is ridiculously fast. Let's say that I just want to look up some whoosh sounds. Let's go ahead and look that up. And just like that, we have loaded in over 8,151 results. Let's try some rain sound effects. And just in a matter of seconds, we have over 10,000 sound effects. The second reason to use Soundly is variation. Because Soundly not only has access to the local sounds on my computer drive, but it also has access to all of the Soundly Pro collection. Plus on top of that, we can go to the add-ons and you can see I have access to their new meme sounds, free to use sounds, the sunset library, free sound, which is over a hundred thousand sound effects and when it comes time to add these sound effects to my timeline if i find oh i'm always hearing these same sound effects over and over we can just shuffle that or you can push command l and so it's going to shuffle all of the sound effects giving you an enormous amount of variation the third reason you need to check out soundly is collections so not only can i favor any sound effect here on the left side but you can also create your own collections so for example i use a lot of slice sound effects so i've created a collection and now i can very easily find those slice sound effects here the fourth reason you need to be using soundly is its ridiculously good integration with final cut pro all i need to do is click and drag over the part of the sound that i want and drag that down to my timeline just like so additionally i've said it up so if I push S it automatically sends it to Final Cut Pro. And the last reason you need to check out Soundly is all of the incredible sound design tools it gives you access to directly in the app. We'll go over here and I can actually reverse that sound. I can normalize it and I can set it to a mono channel. And then from there I could place it into one of these cool locations. So you can see in just a matter of seconds, I can drastically shift how these sound effects work, making my projects stand out that much more. If you're interested in Soundly, please check out the links down below. There's also a special code to give you three months completely for free, no credit card required, which is absurd. I've never seen a company do that. So big shout out to Soundly for coming in with that offer. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful to you in some way, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.